My name is Helge Bastian. I'm the VP and General Manager of the Synthetic Biology uh, Business Segment at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the new developments that we bring to market that are most likely relevant uh, for this topic here in the area of genome editing and DNA synthesis. Before I do so, uh, just a few words on Thermo Fisher Scientific. We consider ourselves the global leader in serving science. Um, with a significant budget in R&D, 700 million that we spend every year across the company. And some uh, familiar um, uh, logos and brands uh, probably here on the slide too. But um, what I think uh, is most resonating with all our employees, and which is about 50,000, and it reminded me of when we had the bioethics discussion earlier, that is uh, our, our slogan is you know, enabling our customers to make the world healthier, safer, and cleaner. So there's little debate with our, with our workforce, like why are we doing this? Everybody's passionate about it. There's something very positive in mind to do, as opposed to thinking to misusing these technologies. Right? Apart from this, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, technologies that Thermo Fisher has internally, there's a lot to choose from. So the synthetic biology business unit you see on the upper right, but of course, we don't work uh, in a silo. We work with all the other uh, compartments of the company together, which allows us to do bigger projects that as smaller companies we would not be able to do. So part of this is probably what you're gonna see in a minute. Um, if you look at the synthetic biology portfolio that we have, so the focus today is on DNA synthesis. There's already a number of products that we have in the market from, from strings to so DNA sequences, libraries, gene to protein, um, that we offer for some time. And then on the genome editing area, all the way up from two technologies, actually Talens and CRISPR, and then different formats. And uh, what I would like to introduce today is some of the new libraries that we bring to market and have already started to bring to market. Uh, what you also see is that we can pick from the delivery reagents, transaction reagents, and make sure that the technologies that we develop on the genome editing side will really make it into the cell. So um, one word on because the hype is uh, so much about CRISPR and uh, we work on CRISPRs quite a bit ourselves, but I don't want to miss to mention that the talent in our world is a very valid technology still. Most of you may be aware of that there's two prominent cases in the UK where small uh, children have been treated for, uh, on leukemia with telefactors actually, it's not CRISPR, most people uh, don't know this. So for us it's also a valid technology, also in research, and we will bring more products to market based on talent technology, I don't want to miss to say that. But what's new from us, so what you will find from us is libraries on CRISPR, guide RNA, purified guide RNA libraries on the one hand side, and then also for more difficult to transfect cells, uh, the lentiviral libraries, right? And uh, of course, uh, transient uh, expression versus uh, stable clones, it's all about it. But what was a challenge for us is uh, to make it a high throughput. And that's uh, what the team in Carlsbad actually who's working on this uh, has done. So we really design, have our own algorithm for designing the guide RNAs. And then we put the primers together uh, to make the template and directly in vitro transcribe from there with stringent quality control so that we can uh, make sure that the product that finally ends uh, on the customer's desk is really what's in the tube, as far as stability, toxicity, and so forth, right? So really high throughput process uh, of smaller kind of known uh, little technologies and video transcription, of course, is nothing new really, but to do it in high throughput and make it in a way that it's reliable is, of course, the format that we're trying to come up with for our customer base, right? It's uh, very simple uh, to use at the end of the day because it's ready to go. Uh, so all uh, people need to know is just what are the genes of interest or the gene sets of interest, and uh, we can deliver them straight away. So if you look at the portfolio of libraries, it's about 19 different libraries, and you can, you can read the list yourself. So this will be, all, some of them are already available, others will be readily available in a short period of time. Just want to say the, the algorithm, we have a CRISPR design tool, a cloud-based tool on the web uh, that is our best used tool uh, in the company overall. So for those of you that are interested in designing 
tie down is and looking what's uh, what's uh, spit out by our algorithm, please uh, be welcome to look at this. Uh, the overall portfolio is uh, in the meantime very comprehensive. So we go uh, from tools like Cas9, uh, mRNA, uh, the protein itself, of course, uh, through engineered cell models, uh, which in many of our cases is also haploid cell models, by the way. And then we also provide a cell engineering service. So when people don't like to use the tools to make their own cell lines, we're happy to do it for them. The library is the next edition, as I just mentioned. And the next big thing for us is to work more on knock-in um, uh, products because this is the application that people are demanding more and more. If you go uh, quickly to the other area that we serve actually for many, many years. Uh, so we're talking about gene synthesis today like the new thing, uh, but uh, the gene art, which is part of Thermo Fisher, is in existence for more than 16 years. So we're selling to customers worldwide every day more than 10,000 uh, genes every month actually. Uh, and ship them out worldwide. So this is, of course, not about making the genome, the human genome, but this is about antibodies a lot. This is about making therapeutic antibodies. A lot of applications that has nothing to do with, uh, I think, some of the bioethic issues that we had discussed earlier. So um, what, um, what is new and uh, will be coming out to the market soon is a, a new platform to making DNA. It's a miniaturized platform. And here we're talking about a little ship, uh, we call it a microchip, which is using uh, uh, beads uh, as a surface to synthesize the oligos. So we're talking of, of a device of this size that has 34, 35,000 wells to make one oligo in every well, right? So it's of course a significant reduction in waste. Uh, this is all organic chemistry, right? And it will uh, allow us to also go on and do the assembly in about a microliter volume and uh, do essentially what we do today in 96 well plates in a, in a little chip like this. How does it look like? Uh, give you a little bit of an idea. So the wafers and the micro welds, um, and, the, and again, it's, it's, uh, it's a small ship of, kind of this size, this is my business card, uh, <laughs> but uh, this essentially is the ship. And you have in every of the 35,000 wells, you have a bead where you synthesize the oligo on it. And then you can collect every bead individually and combine it the way you want to assemble the gene. So a great development that we have been doing for a couple of years now uh, will be launched uh, during the course of this year. And uh, it uh, is also for us interesting to see if customers would be interested to use it in-house in their own labs as opposed to use it as a customer service, which is what most of the DNA synthesis is uh, today, actually. And I think with this, I'm in my seven minute range. Any question? Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, does this open up the possibility of having a desktop device for this? Exactly. Purpose? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and the, I mean, well, the question we ask ourselves is, is this what customers really want? Yeah. Because on the one side, it's convenient to just uh, call somebody and wait a few days and get it. But I think it will depend on how big the demand will be. With projects like this, if we agree and uh, uh, the, the team here agrees to, to launch a big DNA synthesis project like making the genome, from scratch, there might be more demand out there and people really want to have more playground and, and do this themselves. Yeah. I would like to thank uh, the uh, workshop organizers uh, for inviting me to give a talk here. And uh, this meeting is so uh, very exciting. And uh, in the next uh, seven minutes uh, or so, I would like to introduce uh, a few technology we developed in my laboratory uh, that may be relevant uh, to the human genome synthesis project. So one of my goals uh, is to develop uh, an automated cellular engineering platform for a variety of organisms, uh, including bacteria, uh, yeast, and uh, mammalian cells. So in this vision, we try to use uh, uh, genome editing tools. It could be implemented at a genome scale or in a targeted fashion. 
uh, based on the talent CRISPR or uh, small uh, RNA or RNA interference uh, technologies. And then we want to actually develop the uh, integration method, a chromosome integration method uh, to integrate those uh, uh, modules. And also we try to develop uh, the in vivo sensors or even high throughput uh, screening method if we work on uh, small molecules. And particularly, we try to uh, actually make uh, the platform as uh, flexible as uh, possible. And so my even bigger ambition is to really develop uh, 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 a fully automated uh, uh, system, integrated uh, robotic system called uh, uh, Illinois Biological Foundry for advanced biomanufacturing for the cellular uh, engineering. And we want to actually achieve all these uh, 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 goals actually in a single platform. So what I show here actually is a fully integrated robotic system that consists of more than you know, 10, 20 instrumentations, uh, which include uh, 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 robotic arm that features the six degree movement and also have the liquid handling system, PCR machine, and uh, uh, many uh, incubators with different temperature. And uh, I think uh, in biology, as we know, uh, there are many uh, 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 protocols uh, and many you know, applications. So I think the challenge we face is uh, similar to uh, what a chemical engineer faced uh, like 100 years ago. There are so many you know, chemical reactions, uh, so many products we want to make. And what actually really made the chemical engineering a successful discipline is the introduction of a key concept, unit operation. So I think you know, in biology, uh, in, particularly in synthetic biology, people mostly focus on the standardization of parts and the, the modules. And I think what is missing is really the standardization of the protocols, the process. So what we try to do is really to you know, develop those unit operations that will characterize different processes. And then we will develop the process module that consists of different uh, uh, those unit operations. And then we will develop the complex workflows like DNA cloning, pathway engineering, or genome engineering, or laboratory screening. Right? And so in order to make that work, we also have to uh, develop a software that actually can do the scheduling of the various uh, uh, tasks and uh, we try to develop this uh, uh, scheduler. And then in addition, I think uh, uh, we needed the uh, uh, software that control the robotic system. I think the key innovation of our system is really is the full uh, fully automation and also the um, uh, reprogrammable, right? So essentially we try to use a, a single system to achieve uh, many different applications. So here I show a, a video, I don't know whether, oh, it doesn't, Oops, I cannot show the video. Uh, but anyway, I post that online, so if uh, it's on the YouTube, and then uh, you can watch it uh, later. But so, um, let me see. I don't know why it doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, given the time, and you know, I will just move on to show actually a few, you know, examples of how we can actually apply this foundry uh, to achieve uh, different applications, um, particularly at the uh, protein engineering uh, level, and the pathway engineering level, and also genome engineering level. So for the uh, protein engineering, actually we developed uh, this uh, fully automated uh, and high throughput synthesis method for talent. Uh, and uh, as the, uh, many speakers already mentioned, the advantages of uh, talent as a genome editing tools. So a few years ago, we developed this uh, uh, protocol. Basically, we uh, have a, a library of uh, uh, parts. Uh, and based on that library of parts, we actually assemble any you know, DNA binding domain that recognizes a particular sequence. And then we developed this uh, golden gate uh, reaction based uh, assembly method uh, in which we optimize the condition uh, such that we can assemble you know, 16 fragments uh, in one step with a very high fidelity. And then we also actually uh, uh, transform the reaction mixture to E. coli and uh, uh, mini prep uh, the plasmid. So we can automate uh, all the steps uh, involved in the talent synthesis, uh, and we can do it uh, in one day with uh, uh, more than almost 100, uh, 400 uh, uh, talents uh, a day. And as a result, we can dramatically reduce the cost of uh, talent synthesis. Nowadays, we can synthesize uh, talent for uh, less than you know, uh, $3 for any basically targeted sequence. And also, we actually collaborate with uh, ADM. You know, they are interested in uh, um, synthesizing uh, more than a thousand uh, pathways of, that involved in the uh, production of an amino acid. 
So what we did is that we used the, the uh, automated DNA assembly tool to build a, a library of more than a thousand pathways consisting uh, promoters with different strengths and also uh, genes from different uh, organisms. So we build that pathway library and then give them, so now they are doing high throughput screening. And in addition, actually we try to automate uh, the genome engineering protocol. So we actually developed the, this uh, uh, EAST uh, uh, engineering, uh, genome engineering uh, 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 method, so in which actually we use the RNA interference machinery to do genome-wide uh, uh, knockdown, and in addition, we actually use the cDNA overexpression library to do genome-wide uh, overexpression. So essentially, we actually can do both uh, uh, gene overexpression and uh, uh, knockdown on genome scale in yeast. And then we develop this workflow, as i shown here, in a very complicated uh, workflow. So we actually create this uh, uh, library of uh, uh, RNA interference cassettes and a cDNA library uh, using the robotic system and then actually transform them into yeast. And then we actually uh, do the uh, uh, screening and, and then also isolate the uh, improved uh, variants. And then actually we integrate uh, these uh, 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 genome editing modules into the chromosome, right? And then we actually uh, repeat this cycle again. So we were able to actually fully automate the entire process. And it actually took us you know, more than two years actually to fully develop all the you know, tools to make this uh, 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 possible. And then we actually used this uh, um, uh, method to actually engineer a, a few actually phenotypes, uh, such as the glass retardation, uh, um, acidic acid tolerance, uh, and isobutanol production, and also uh, cellulose expression. So what I show here is actually just the acidic acid tolerance. So we are able to improve the tolerance to more than 1.1% after three rounds of uh, automated uh, uh, genome engineering. And then we also showed that we still can you know, produce uh, uh, ethanol at a high level with the uh, high concentration of uh, acetic acid. So I think this is really, I think, just the beginning of uh, many things that we can do with the foundry. And so we are actively working on developing a wide variety of uh, technologies uh, to enhance the capability of the foundry. Particularly, we're interested in applying the foundry for uh, many cell engineering. So that's actually the main focus right now in my lab. Okay, thank you. Use of RNAi in yeast. Did I understand yeah, that correctly? Yeah, that's right. Um, my understanding was that that wasn't very reproducible method uh, in in yeast. So when you when you did this, did you find that most of your um, your winners uh, were those that overexpressed genes, or were they mostly knockdowns? caused by SI. We found RNA. both, because I mentioned that for RNA interference, of course, it's only for knockdown, but we also use the cDNA overexpression library. So we use both, right, a library in yeast, and we did find the uh, mutations that actually from both libraries. 